You're listening to a special episode of Neocash Radio. In the studio with you, it's JJ. In this special episode, I interview the Chief Product Officer of the Legolas Exchange, Hugo Ronaldin. We discuss the creation of a premium, institutionally compliant crypto exchange headquartered in France. After a successful LGO token sale, the Coin Agnostic Project is building a hybrid design using private protocols and public blockchains. Welcome to the show, Hugo Ronaldin, Chief Product Officer of the Legolas Exchange. Welcome, Hugo. Hey, JJ. How's it going? Excellent. Thanks for uh, coming on the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. All right. Well, let's start out with, again, uh, with every interview, I, I start out with you, the, uh, the, the person behind all this stuff. So please tell us a little about yourself and, and how you discovered cryptocurrencies. Sure. So I discovered cryptocurrencies on the engineering side. So I come, uh, I've graduated from an engineering school in France, a scientific school, and I've always liked, you know, to code and to uh, to uh, put my hands in the in the dirty work, let's say, and I discovered blockchain in one of my classes. Actually, it was one of my professor computer science that was talking about blockchain, and I got very interested in that. And you know, I started looking at uh, the Ethereum blockchain, looking at smart contracts, trying to to understand how the Solidity uh, language worked, and try to you know make proof of concept off of that. So, as a matter of fact, I did a proof of concept of a decentralized exchange, not of cryptocurrencies, but of equity and stocks. Uh, well, like two years ago, uh, so that's that's how I, you know, I entered this market really on the te- on the technical side. Now doing this, I started investing myself a bit in, in cryptocurrencies, and I like that. Uh, I really enjoyed it, and um, and I found a job at a market making firm in the cryptocurrency market, which is called Bitspread. And so, what Bitspread does basically, it's a, so it's a fund of cryptocurrencies. And they're doing market makings, and by doing that, uh, I got I got to work with a lot of exchanges, and I actually got to see firsthand what was uh, what were the different problems with those exchanges, the difficulty to get the, your fiat money in exchanges, the counterparty risk, you don't know how everything is stored. Uh, there's a problem of transparency. So I got to see all these uh, these problems from an institutional perspective, because really it was an institutional. This is an institutional investor, and. You know, and I, I said to myself, there's really some values, some value to add in this cryptocurrency market. And that's how, you know, we, we started Legolas with uh, Fred and Lucia. Well, excellent. Well, let's let's get right into Legolas. Uh, please tell us a little bit what, about what it is and uh, we'll, we'll explore there. Sure. So what Legolas Exchange is, it's a premium uh, cryptocurrency uh, exchange designed for institutional investors. So now what does that mean? Uh, that means that it's designed for institutional investors. That means that the, the service level is uh, at the level which is required for uh, institutional investors. Now, that doesn't mean that we'll only have institutional investors as clients, but that means that's that's the kind of service level that we're building. Now, it's a um, it's a premium uh, exchange, so we're working with the best uh, institutional uh, financial institutions, sorry, the best financial institution to offer. A good custody service, both in terms of fiat and crypto, to offer good clearing, good settlement, to offer offer what what every other exchange, crypto or not crypto, are offering, and to offer it in the in a premium manner. Now, the the little specificity about Legolas Exchange is it's it's the Legolas protocol. So basically, the idea was saying that all the crypto, I mean, most of the cryptocurrency exchanges were providing price which was not fair, which was front run, which was manipulated. So um, we've designed this protocol with the idea in mind uh, that we would be able to say our price is not front run. So we're using the blockchain technology to decentralize the order book and we're centralizing the matching engine. So it's a hybrid technology that allows us to have transparency on the order book and efficiency uh, from the centralized matching engine. So that's a bit in a nutshell, the glass exchange. Excellent. Uh, so, you know, you mentioned a, a couple of the issues front running, but let's let's take a moment. And, you know, this is something we've covered on Neocash Radio extensively. But let's for a moment talk about some of the issues that are currently uh, the exchange are currently facing uh, out there. And, uh, you know, starting out with front running, um, that's, you know, one one big issue. And, and then spoofing uh, perhaps is another one. Can you just take a moment and talk about that? Sure. So there's a lot of problems with uh, current exchanges. So the first one, of course, is price transparency, as you as you mentioned. Um, so front running for, for for those who don't know. So what front running is? It's actually quite simple. It's me as a client. I'm sending an order to an exchange. This exchange gets my order and places its own order before me. 
So he has the information of my order. He can put it its order because he knows how the market is going to react with my order and he can make a profit off of me. So that's completely illegal. Uh, and that happens in every market, cryptocurrency or not. For, as a matter of fact, the foreign exchange market is, uh, is full of front running uh, and a lot of banks are getting fined for that. But it's all the more true uh, on cryptocurrency exchanges. So this is the... Um, uh, I'd say the biggest market manipulation, and there's a lot of others like spoofing and, and, and things like that. And it's really a problem because it uh, devaluates the confidence that people have in cryptocurrency. Well, one in particular we talked about was early on, uh, Bitfinex um, was very open. Their manager who was running the exchange was very open about the fact that he was also trading on the exchange. Not only that, but he was also creating a hedge fund business on the side. And that sort of, you know, that that sort of, there's there's ethical gray area, and then there's there's definitely unethical activities that are going on. So that's that's just one. And Bitfinex is, is perhaps one of the biggest biggest changes. Um, and that's you know something we warn our listeners about is that this sort of activity has gone on in the past, and we don't know that it isn't going on now because there isn't any sort of real transparency. Absolutely, and it's all a matter of uh, agent principle uh, risk, you know. So basically, an exchange shouldn't even trade on, on its own platform. And that's, right. that's unfortunately the case with Bitfinex, for example. And our, our vision is that we're only a market. We're not uh, acting in the market. We're not, you know, we're not intervening in the market. We're just an infrastructure. And we're offering people to, to transact uh, in a fair and transparent way. So that, that's, that's really the, our pledge here. So it, now, is is there a, is this a you mentioned a premium premium exchange? You're, you're doing a lot of interfacing, and we'll talk about that with the banks in a little bit. But is this a registered business uh, somewhere in the world, and, and where is where is that? Yeah. So right now, uh, Legolas is a French company uh, registered in France with a French bank account. Uh, now the goal, of course, is to be registered in the U.S. So right. it's, uh, it will be announced soon, but we'll, we'll create a U.S. entity that we will uh, regulate. Uh, we'll try to make it compliant with the, the authority. So I don't know if you've seen yesterday, there, there was a, a very interesting paper from the, the SEC, a statement on cryptocurrency exchanges, saying that the current cryptocurrency exchanges are actually not exchanges in, in the sense that the SEC uses this word. So um, there's a lot of work. There's a lot. Of, there's actually a lot of yeah, there's a lot of work done in the regulation of cryptocurrency exchanges, but we have the advantage of not having done a shady thing in the past. So we're starting from day one, trying to be fully uh, compliant and regulated, working with the regulators, and we'll be starting off with the U.S. Excellent. Yeah. I mean, I think that's totally true. And once again, something we, we want to war- caution the listeners is that the exchanges out there now, you know, it's it it's, could be very much something that someone's running out of their garage. You know, obviously... Absolutely. It's not necessarily that specifically, but it's, you can't, you know, we, we tell our listeners never leave your crypto on the exchange, always have it on private wallet whose keys you control. But there you have the case of so many people who have left their crypto on the exchange. And then uh, a bit grail recently uh, with the Ryblox that became nano, you know, they, they lost a lot of, of money. And it turns out that this stuff happened months ago, and it was it was perhaps an inside job, or, or maybe not an inside job, but at least you know there was there was a lot of lax security going on. So let's let's talk for a moment how Legolas is going to uh, tackle some of these security issues. What what are some of the the security layers you're you're looking at working on and adding in? Absolutely. So there's two types, uh, two different types of security. The first one is the security on the exchange. So how you log in, how you place your order, uh, you know, how you make sure that you're not uh, getting hacked itself. So it has nothing to do with the, the blockchain and whatsoever. It's just a pure uh, platform uh, platform problem. So right now, there's a problem with the login uh, on cryptocurrency exchanges. I mean, it's, it's completely insane to think that with only uh, an email address, a password, and a 2FA or a code that you have on your on your phone or whatever, you can you can deal with millions of dollars. It's not enough. The security is not enough. So we'll be in plan. So if you look at what Nasdaq or Nice is doing, all those the, those big exchanges, they have actually uh, much stricter processes in place in terms of authentication on their platform. So that's something that will apply to the to the um, two leg glass exchange. Now there's the whole security on the, the processes and you know how we deal with information about our clients, about our client orders. And of course, this is super important for us. 
just for us to be regulated because the SEC, the CFTC and all the regulators are going to go into our system and see and look if our processes are secure enough. And of course, we need it to be secure for our long goal to be uh, 100% uh, regulated. So that's the first part of the security matters. Now on the second part of the security matters, which is specific to cryptocurrency exchanges, it's the, the custody. Right. And you, and you rightly mentioned that right now it's a bit crazy that people are, I, don't, I mean, it's absolutely crazy to, to leave your, your cryptocurrencies in an exchange. Everybody already agrees with that and, and, and it's a bit insane. And, and they still do it. And yeah, they still do it because it's, it's, you know, it's just more convenient, I guess. Yeah. And that makes that there's a, a real problem. It's that the risk which is on the, the exchange itself, on the platform, and the risk which is on the custody of your coins are not separated. So, for example, if I choose w- whichever exchange on the on the market, let's let's take Kraken for example. I don't have anything against Kraken. I'm just using them as an example. So, if I put a uh, hundred million dollars on Kraken you know, and I don't do anything, there's just a hundred million dollars in Bitcoin or in Ethereum or in USD on whichever currency. Let's say in BTC. So, I have a hundred million dollars in BTC on Kraken. I don't do anything. I'm just holding. And now there's a um, there's a hack on Kraken. Well, even though I haven't placed any orders whatsoever, my money is at risk, and chances are that I won't retrieve all my money, even though I haven't done anything on the exchange. So the risk of custody and the risk of exchange are not separate, and that's a big problem. So that's something that we that we will separate, and that's really a, a main focus here. It's to separate the exchange risk itself, the exchange of the the risk of the exchange being uh, you know. Uh, uh, hacked the, the the exchange being uh, overloaded with uh, you know with inputs with uh, with orders and uh, the um, the ability to move and to have an, uh, your, the hand on your cryptos. So how are we going to do that? Because it's a big uh, it's a big issue and it's a uh, uh, it's a big value added. So the, the way it's going to work basically is that we'll offer uh, to every uh, customer, every of our customer. We'll offer them a multi-signature wallet. So this wallet will need will have three signatures, which will be stored in HSMs in uh, hardware wallets. So basically, the client will hold one HSM, Legolas will hold one HSM, and a trusted third party will hold a third uh, HSM. So it's pretty similar to what works in the banking world with a um, credit card, a debit card. You know, the customer has a debit card. The bank has a key which corresponds to this debit card, which authorizes the transactions. And if you lose you as a client, your credit card, you're able to, you know, have another one by seeing this trusted inter- intermediary, which is your agency or your, your, your banker. So it's pretty much the same here. So there's three keys which are held by three different people. And you have this multi-signature wallet. So when you have this multi-signature wallet, your funds are not on the exchange. If you want to transact on the exchange, you have to transfer uh, your BTCs, your ETH, your cryptos from your your multi sig wallet to the exchange. So you will sign you as a client. You will sign a transaction. Uh, we as an exchange will double sign the transaction to make sure you know that uh, that you have that you indeed have the funds. That you know that you don't have any orders which are placed on the exchange, which would lead to double spending on the platform. But that's the only thing we do. And if it's good, we sign the 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 transaction and as it's a two of three multi-signature wallet meaning that you need two signatures out of the three which are available uh, your funds will get moved to the exchange and you'll be able to transact very uh, easily now if you choose so the the, um, the result of this is that if you choose not to transact on the exchange i mean you pretty have, have just a, a hardware wallet uh, yourself you can do whatever you want with it you can move your funds from this wallet to to another wallet you can do whatever you want but you can also transact very easily with Legolas Exchange. And that means that if there's a hack on Legolas Exchange, the only uh, amount which is at risk is the amount that you've placed in orders, which is which is on the hot wallet of, uh, of Legolas Exchange, which is kind of put in a, an escrow. It's not really that, but it's, it's put on the exchange, and that's the only uh, money which is at risk. All the rest, all with... All the thing, all the cryptos which are stored in your in your wallet, in your Legolas wallet, are completely safe from any uh, risks on the exchange. So that's that's really what we want to offer, and I think that's a big differentiator with what happens right now uh, with uh, all the current crypto, cryptocurrency exchanges. 
Yeah. I mean, that's, that is, that is a big difference. Uh, and I think a welcome change, of course. Uh, you mentioned you, how you're involved, of course, with uh, the banks and making sure that, you know, there is a, a fiat portal for, for in and out of your exchange. So let's talk a little bit about that. Who is Makeor Securities? Absolutely. So as you know, you know, having, so the, the, the idea behind Legolas is to offer an institutional grade exchange. So now when you talk about institutional grade exchange, you have to look at institutions and inst institutions that don't hold crypto. So you have to create a fiat to crypto exchange. Um, now, having a bank and having a decent bank is very difficult. Uh, you have, like, for example, uh, if you go on Kraken or if you go on Coinbase in Europe, you, you, you have low, you have second, second tier, uh, third tier banks. And it's very important for institution and it's very important for retail as well. You know, if I'm sending money to, if I'm sending dollars or euros to an exchange, I need to do, I need to know at which bank it's going, uh, what kind of, uh, service levels they have, what kind of insurance they have on my funds, you know, to be sure that, you know, my, my fiat money is perfectly, uh, perfectly safe and not at risk at all. So the way uh, we do this is that we're, part, we're, we're partnering up with brokers, brokers in the institutional equity world. So Makeor Security uh, is a broker which is regulated by the SEC, the FINRA, the FMA in the UK, uh, which is regulated uh, by the Swiss uh, regulator. Uh, they have offices in seven countries, and they have a portfolio of close to a thousand institutional clients. So these brokers, which are our partners uh, in the U.S. and in Europe and in all the countries that they, they they operate in, so these brokers they're giving us access to their fiat infrastructure. They're wor they're working with banks, they're working with custodians, and they take care of this uh, fiat part. So meaning that if you're a uh, client of Legalize Exchange and you want to send $100 million to transact on the U.S. exchange. Well, you'll send these dollars to one of Maycor's uh, partner, banking partners. So, you know, uh, it can be... Uh, I, I'm, I'm not allowed to reveal the the, part, the banking partners of Maycor, of course, but it's uh, top-tier banks which work with institutional brokers. And that's that's what we'll, we're, we'll be able to offer in terms of infrastructure to our client. Now, the second side effect of that is that we'll be able to actually bridge the gap between the service levels that we have in the financial industry, uh, in the brokerage business. You know, we have salespeople that are very dedicated to their clients, that are uh, very transparent, regulated, uh, audited by the DSCC, the CFTC, and every every big institutions, uh, regulate, regulatory institutions. So you have the service level of these guys that will be bringing in into the cryptocurrency market for legal asset exchange clients. So. If you want, that's how it would work with Makeor. Uh, they would be our partner, taking care of the fiat, uh, the fiat custody uh, and the fiat aspects of uh, transacting on a fiat to crypto exchange. And they would allow us to bridge the gap between the cryptocurrency space and the financial space by, um, by sharing their expertise and their service levels. Excellent. I mean, that's once again, you know, something that's, that's needed, especially you know, mentioned moving around millions of dollars you know, it, it's, it's, you want that taken care of and you want the right people to, to have, you know, custody of it when, it, when they need to. Uh, so that's, that's an important area as well. Um, let's, let's talk a little bit about your platform as far as you're, you're looking at offering a better and more accountable platform, but also offering transparency and audit, auditability. Uh, can you talk a little bit about, about those things? Sure. So, uh Every everything which is trans, every transparency issues are related to the price. It's uh, I'm an I'm a I'm an individual. Uh, I want to transact. And I want to make sure that the price that I pay is effectively the price which is requested by another client on the exchange, and that you know it's not the exchange which is fooling me, or that uh, you know it's a it's a fake price. I don't I don't want it to be a fake price. I want it to be a pure market price to have a real counterpart in front of me. And that's what transparency is about. It's about bringing this information to the client. Now, there's two ways to see it. The first way is saying, okay, hey, guys, trust me. I'm transparent. Uh, look at me. I'm, a, uh, I'm regulated by this, 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 and this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, and I'm very transparent. Just trust me. So that's, the, that's not the way we, we see things. And that's, by the way, not the way the, that's not compatible with the philosophy of the blockchain technology, which is to be able to transact with, without having to trust the other counterpart. Now, the, right. the way we, we see things is that we are provably transparent and provably fair. 
So the way it works, uh, it works with the legal as protocol. So um, let's let's do a quick use case here. So I'm legal as exchange and you're a client. You want to place an order, well, whichever amount and on whichever currency pair. So you're going to encrypt this order and you're going to send it to me. Now I'm I'm going to receive you know uh, something which is uh, which is encrypted. I, I don't see the meaning of it. I don't see anything of it. I, I just have a timestamp. I pull it with other orders which are coming in. I place this on the blockchain. I, so I place it in the, let's let's say it forms a block. I put this block in the blockchain. I wait, I wait for the, the this block to be validated by the blockchain, and then I retrieve it once it's validated. Once it's validated, I ask you for your the key that allowed you to encrypt your order. So I'm, uh, I'm able to decrypt your order. And all these orders that are dec decrypted, I give it directly to my matching engine. And the trades are processed and the trades are settled and, and so forth. So the main difference here is that I'm sending all the information that you send me in an encrypted manner to, to a blockchain, which is a public ledger, completely transparent and auditable. And I retrieve this information from the blockchain. So I retrieve the same information that everybody sees. So I cannot, Play, you know, I cannot add an, an order uh, and front run you. I cannot manipulate the order book because because it's I take the order book from the blockchain. And if I do something, it's it, you will immediately be able to see it, and it it will not be. I mean, it will be immediately visible. So that that's the the, the way we see things. We we've made things. The, this legalized protocol allows us to say we are provably transparent, and you don't have to trust us. Uh, to trust us saying that we're transparent. We're actually proving you that we cannot manipulate the market. Okay, so the, you, you mentioned this blockchain now. Is this the Ethereum blockchain you're talking about? So it's um, it's actually something that we're figuring out. So the, the, the protocol is blockchain agnostic, completely blockchain agnostic. Uh, okay. So we can use whichever blockchain we want. The only thing we need is the ability to retrieve the the information as fast as possible. So, of course, Ethereum, the Ethereum blockchain is a uh, is a uh, is our favorite choice right now because it's uh, it's uh, widely used. Uh, it's uh, relatively fast. Uh, it's secure. And now, you know, in the in the future, we'll we'll, we'll be very uh, we'll be able to switch very easily to a very fast to much faster blockchain, you know, like a seller or something like that. Uh, but the, the the point is that we're blockchain agnostic, and right now we're working with Ether the Ethereum blockchain. But at some point, we'll be able to change, given depending on the security of uh, of the blockchain we want to use and the the rapid the latency and the, the block time validation. I mean, it's it's we can choose. Okay, just to be clear, that the Legolas protocol isn't making their own uh, Legolas blockchain. No. Okay. So um, for, let's just talk for a moment. We mentioned Ethereum. Uh, you, you have a token that's associated with this. The LGO token is an ERC-20 token on the public Ethereum blockchain. Um, so uh, you had a token sale and all that. How, how did all that go? Yeah, exactly. So, um, so we created the LGO token to allow people to pay for the transaction fees on Legolas Exchange. Uh, so it's, a bit, it's very similar to the Binance coin. Uh, Binance is an exchange. I have a coin. And you can pay the fees on Binance with this coin. So that's pretty much the same. Uh, now the token sale, the, the way we the way we led it, so we, we had a first private sale, first part which was a private sale, sorry. Uh, so, you know, uh, pretty similar to a fundraising or like a, an equity fundraising for a startup. So we went and see investors, uh, gave them SAFs, pitched them the project. And so that was very, at the, that was at the early stage. Uh, so we raised close to uh, 1,500 Bitcoins this way. Uh, and then we had a, a, public to a public sale. So the public sale uh, happened on February 1st, 2018. And it lasted nine hours, uh, during which we sold a bit more than 2,000 Bitcoins. So we, re we reached our hard, hard cap in nine hours. And that was the, the process was completely different. So we had a full, uh, an entire team uh, put in place, you know, community managers coming from different countries, from South Korea, from Russia, from uh, from Brazil, from, uh, from South America, you know, people creating and, um, and uh, yeah, creating communities all around the world around the LGO token and to to raise awareness on the problems that we're trying to solve and, you know, also to, to, to make them aware of what we're doing. So that was that was actually that was pretty pretty insane to to be honest. I mean, in nine hours we filled the the, the whole ICOs. We have more than ten thousand uh, investors, 
So it's there we have a real support, a real community. And you know, um, it's it's very different from from uh, from the startup world where you uh, you know you raise equity money, equity uh, funding and you have a few investors you know that that are basically telling you what to do and then you can only give back to the people that are using your platform when you're doing an IPO or something like that. Here you know we have a community from day one, people that are holding the AGO token that will use the Legolas exchange the, that will use Legolas exchange. And from day one, we're able to say, hey, we're sharing a bit of this value with you through this LGO token. And we're giving you access to this platform because you believed in us in the first place. And, you know, and it's, it's very important to feel supported by this community. And it's, uh, it's actually a great feeling. The LGO uh, token right now is, is used to pay fees in the platform. And uh, you, you're saying that eventually, you know, you're going to pretty much decide whichever blockchain ends up being the the best security wise as well as well as speed. Uh, and one one factor you're looking at uh, making fair for for all people is the latency. Uh, can you talk a little bit about that? Yes, absolutely. So when you look at things, when you look at exchanges, and it's the everybody's running for speed. You know, uh, everybody's saying, "Yeah, I'm the fastest exchange." Uh, you can access to 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 my platform in X milliseconds. Uh, so so that's that's the 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 battle here. Well, what we're saying is that actually speed is unfair uh, because that means that the people that have the better the best infrastructure that have the the most money to to that, that, that are the most that can invest the most in you know the infrastructure and their ability to to place their order quickly. I mean, these guys, they have an, an unfair advantage on all the market. So what we're saying is that this protocol, which is using a blockchain, and which, by by essence, the latency of this protocol and the, the and Lego S exchange is tied to the blockchain that we're using, this is actually uh, something fair. So let me explain that a, a bit. So because we use Lego S protocol to, uh, to, uh, to update the order book, because we use a blockchain, uh, we're limited by the block the, the validation time of the blockchain. So let's say sure. it's 10 seconds. So that means that my order book on Legolas Exchange will update every 10 seconds. So now you know during those between in between those two uh, those two uh, those two update periods those, during those 10 seconds, the order book will say the same. Well, but you have people that will interact on this order book. People that will you know try to take the same bid and take the same in the same same ask. People that will interact and. You know the the fastest will not will not be the one which will have the the, the reward or will have the the will fill the order. Instead, what will happen is that all the orders that were placed during this period during which the order book is not updated, all these orders will be matched uh, according to an, an algorithm which will not be first in first out, which will be for prorated. You know, so being the fastest one on the on the market doesn't make a difference. That means that during a flash crash, if you're a little guy that has 10 Bitcoin, or sorry, if you have a one, 10 Bitcoin is huge. If you have 0. 0.5, <laughs> 10, 0.5 Bitcoin or whatever, you know, if you have a hundred dollars worth of Bitcoin, I mean, you have access to exactly the same execution to, as the guy that has a hundred million dollars and has been able to invest millions of dollars in, in his infrastructure. So it's really, you know, all about being fair to all the users of the, the exchange. By saying that it's not because you're the fastest that you'll have the best offers and you'll have the the, the the best trades on the market. Everybody will have this access to the same market. This so in the sense, latency is, is actually very good. And it's kind of a you know a change of paradigm with what we see in the market. You know, it's uh, it's saying yes, we guarantee no front running uh, from our side, but we also guarantee no front running from the people that are the fastest and that can see your, your auras and, and stuff like that. So, so really that's, that's the mentality here. So you have a, cer- a set number of LGO tokens um, and then you have something in, in your, your protocol which will destroy LGOs over time mm-hmm. uh, a little bit. So can you talk just a little bit about that? Sure. So every transaction on the, um, on the on Legolas Exchange will incur a transaction fee like in every exchange. Uh, so there's no uh, figure on what will be the exact uh, the exact fee, but there will be an exchange fee, and this exchange fee will be payable in LGO tokens. That means that if I do a BTC USD transaction on the Glass Exchange, I'll be able to pay the fee on this transaction in LGO token as a currency. Now, this LGO tokens of this fee, we will burn 25. percent 
So we'll take 25% of this LDO token and, and burn them. They will be, you know, they, they will not be, uh, they will be out of the circulation. So the reason why we're doing that is that this way token holders and are, you know, incentivized to use LGO tokens on the platform. What's the current status of your development right now? Sure. So we have a, a tech team which is, uh, which is in France, so a, a bunch of French engineers. Uh, we're close to 15 engineers now. So basically, right now, uh, the goal is one to uh, produce, uh, to ship a matching engine, which is uh, the top of the market. So we're, we're uh, you know, we're not saying we're going to uh, reinvent the wheel. You know, we're we're using solutions that have been uh, used and that uh, that have been tested for now more than 20, 30 years, and we're you know taking those bricks and assembling them together to to offer the, one of the best matching engine in the, in the in the space. So that's the first part, the matching engine. The second part is on the cryptocurrency wallet. Uh, and this part is essential. Uh, as I said you know, earlier, it's uh, one of our key points to separate the custody risk from the exchange risk. So in order to do that, we need to have a good, uh, a perfect cryptocurrency, multi-signature cryptocurrency uh, wallet infrastructure. And that's what we're building right now. So we, we have these two products that we want to ship. Now we'll make them connect together, you know, so that you can, uh, uh, your wallet and the, and the matching engine can connect and you can, uh, settle instant instantaneously the crypto funds then we'll have to uh, to input uh, the fiat data and we'll have to create the, the the UI the interface but mostly what we we'll what we're building right now uh, is the the base blocks of the projects which are the matching engine and the cryptocurrency wallet you keep mentioning the the premium aspect and and how this is built for institutional investors but uh like who is who is initially going to be able to use the platform, and then what's what's the plans to expand that, if any? So yeah, the so Legolas Exchange, it's Legolas Exchange and Legolas Protocol. Our pledge is to offer transparency to, to the the whole cryptocurrency market, institutional and retail. So we're building a solution for institutional and retail investors. So the um, the fact is that it will be it will probably be easier to start. It is easier to start with institutionals because you know that's if we start with institutionals, we're doing the difficult work first. We're able to go and see uh, regulators and saying yes, we do that for institutionals. That's our processes. They're much better than all the processes that we have in the market because we're targeting institutionals. And when we have that, when we have this offering for the institutionals, it's very easy to replicate the process for retail. And so that that's the the the, the way we see things. You know, we're, we'll be offering legal exchange to, of course, retail and institutionals, but we'll start off with institutional and then, you know, s switch and offer a solution for retail. Is there sort of a date in mind for uh, for launching the first the first iteration of the, the platform? Sure, yeah. So the, the timeline is Q3 2018. So let's say September 2018, you know, we'll be able to uh, to, to launch uh, the platform itself. Now there's a lot of... Uh, so there's, there's two things. There's one, that our ability to execute and... I mean, uh, personally, I don't doubt it, but I guess that people can doubt it, and that's that's what corresponds to the to the the launch in Q3 2018. And then there's the regulatory uh, aspect. So we want to be fully regulated. We want to be fully regulated from day one, and that uh, may take a bit more time. So we're pretty confident that we'll be able to do things in the next six months. Um, but then again, it's not entirely in our hands. We're doing everything we can. We're we're uh, hiring a lot of people on the compliance and legal side to help us do this uh, this legal work and uh, i can assure you it's a big, it's a big budget and a big commitment for us but it's uh, it's uh, one part of the equation the second part of the equation it's technical and this we are confident we'll be able to ship uh, an up and running product by september 2018 so where can people find out more in in that so i guess the the easiest way to do it is to follow us on medium uh, so we have a, a page on Medium uh, Legolas Exchange, and our preferred channel of communication is Discord. So we have a very well uh, structured Discord with all the announcements, and it's it's how we interact mostly with our community. Telegram as well, but the Discord is m is very well structured. Well, thank you so much for joining me, Hugo. Thank you, JJ. It was a pleasure. Thank you for listening to this special episode of Neo Cash Radio. 
Check out our main show every Wednesday. Darren, Pedro, and I discuss the future of money today. Visit NewCashRadio.com. This interview is not an endorsement or investment advice. I make no warranty about the claims or projections discussed in this episode. Please be mindful of any and all regulations regarding cryptocurrency in your particular jurisdiction. Never invest gamble more than you're willing to lose and always safeguard your digital currency by keeping it on a wallet whose private keys you control.